moving back to business bills to pay so i'm just gonna have a quick drink okay so similar to how the customer account is shown this is all of your suppliers and um, we can again filter on all draft awaiting approval awaiting payment paid and repeating so if we go to awaiting payment here this will give you an idea of how much um how uh, yeah what you owe to suppliers basically um after reconciling the bank etc and you can filter on um the individual supplier or start date end date etc now i touched on this just before but obviously within um zero if you go on contacts here and just open that up um in a separate tab here you've got all if you select this um all button but for those that have only ever had sales invoices raised against them or um purchase invoices it does filter out between customers and suppliers here and you can also archive um old suppliers and old customers and add groups um and smart lists as well so um you know those that are overdue in seven days um outstanding more than 30 days you can do all sorts of stuff within there but focusing back on here if you had um if you're using dext um for example or you're using um hubdoc or another sort of system that is analyzing invoices you have the option within dext for example to say that once you have analyzed an invoice in dext it goes straight into zero as in approved in zero or you've got the option of um adding it to this awaiting approval list and that's great, but it also catches a lot of people out because um, if it's under awaiting approval, sometimes people miss it and then they go to reconcile the bank and they forget that actually there's these, you know, invoices awaiting approval. Um, and then they reconcile the bank without an invoice and tell the customer um, or um, your client that they don't have the invoices when they clearly do because they're just sat under awaiting approval. So. What I'd say is if you're doing bookkeeping for a client, just check this await and approval tab first and make sure that you analyze anything in there before you move on to um, reconcile the bank. Now, again, you can't really make that much of a mistake in here um, because you know if you archive something by mistake or you deleted something, you can still find it um, and you can actually do a bit of a audit trail within Xero to find um, anything like that which has happened. So. Let's just say um, that you need to raise um, another purchase invoice in the system. So um, you've received a purchase invoice from somebody. So let's just look at this one here. So we've got Capital Cab Co just here. Um, and here um, we can see what it's for, etc. And um, we can see um, the VAT rate, etc. Um, down here. Now, this was approved um, by myself. Um, but um, let's just see what's happened. So here, if you were to attach a purchase invoice into Xero, you would attach it on here by clicking just that button there and uploading a file. So you can upload that from your desktop or you can drag and drop it into there. Um, and I'd always recommend that with any sort of purchase invoice that you've got on Xero that you do that so that you've got a bit of an audit trail. Now, if you wanted to add a payment to this, you can do it from this bit here. So you could say date paid, um, 31st or you know 28th of July. And where was it paid from? Was it the bank account, savings account? Um, was it paid by the owner, etc.? And any reference that you wanted to add. So that's one way of doing that. Um, but there is a ton of other ways that you can do that as well. Um, so let's just go back to business. So. Um, you might also have purchase orders. So some businesses, particularly, um, you know, in the construction industry, excuse the squeaky chair, um, will have purchase orders that they send out to um, a supplier, for example. So it will state, you know, this is how much it's gonna cost, etc., And then the actual supplier has to confirm that they're happy with that purchase order and approve it. And then you raise a um, sales invoice, for example. And it's the same way with um, purchase orders. So again, 
if you want to purchase something from a supplier, you would have that approved internally before going ahead and buying that item because you can have situations in business where people buy from the wrong supplier or don't make it um, the most of discounts and bull discounts, etc. So that's very heavily monitored by the accounts department where you've got a big construction company. But again, if you've got purchase orders of any kind, um, then they are just here. So um, again, you're not going to have, um, just to make this a bit more simple to understand, um, you're not going to have a purchase order that's paid separately to a purchase invoice. So you will always have the attachment of the purchase order to the purchase invoice um, within Zero. So it's almost like um, having a delivery note attached to a purchase invoice, for example. So the purchase order comes before the invoice, but what you'll see on the system is the invoice being paid. So you could raise a new purchase order here. Um, you could um, draft one ready for approval, etc. Same sort of thing as um, any other accounting system. So then we've got our expense claims. So again, squeaky chair. Um, if you've got a client that uses a lot of expenditure, so staff expenditure, you can again keep a track of that within here. So you can have, um, you know, you can set those up to be reviewed by somebody, to be paid by somebody. You can click on all, just your own if you're, um, you've got a user account in here. And then down here are quite a few um, that have been submitted, etc. So if we click on here, this shows you um, what it's for. Over here, if they had actually attached um, the receipt, you would see it on the left. Um, and then there, you've got the mileage to claim, the rate, etc., and the total, and the account that it's gone to. Now, uh, that's under advertising and marketing, but actually, because it's mileage, that should be motor. But anyway, um, yeah, you can click on those to review as well. So let's just have a look at this one, for example. So again, there's no um, attachment, which there should be. But if I was happy with this, I would go ahead and click on approve. And then it would come under to pay. And you can see it just there. So you then have to pay that to the individual um, that it relates to. And you can also pay it all by clicking on this button here. Okay. And that will show under awaiting payment. So. That's um, expenses. So, so I think we've covered the business tab um, in quite a lot of detail there. So now let's move on to accounting. So there's a heck of a lot to cover in here actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the video there so that it's not too much of an overload of information for you to take in. But if you liked the video, then give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing as always. And I will leave a link to the next video in this playlist for you to look at. And if you've got any questions about Zero, don't hesitate to ask. And otherwise, yeah. Catch you at the next one.